you might want to sit down for this, because what I'm about to tell you is unnervingly simple. You might not be real, not in the way you think. Right now, your memories, your worries, even your urge to click away may only exist because something unimaginably vast is dreaming you. Not a god, not a computer simulation, the universe itself, a mindless ocean of stars thinking in its sleep. And us, flickering moments in that dream. But wait, how could that possibly be true? To answer that, we need to go deep past neurons and particles into the very nature of consciousness itself. You've probably never seen your own brain, but inside your skull, trillions of electrical signals flicker endlessly. They process light. They store birthdays. They remind you where you left your keys most of the time. Science understands this part very well. Neurons talk to each other through electrochemical signals. Circuits encode patterns. Thoughts emerge. But then comes the part no one can quite explain. Why does all of this feel like something? When your brain processes the color red, why don't you just compute it like a calculator processes data? Why do you experience red? Why does pain hurt? Why does music move you? Why do you feel like you sitting there watching this right now? Here, science hits a wall. Classical neuroscience can explain functions. It can predict behaviors, but it can't explain why anything feels like anything at all. This is what philosophers call the hard problem of consciousness. According to the standard view, consciousness should have emerged from complexity, billions of neurons, trillions of connections. Like steam from boiling water, awareness should just appear, but it hasn't. Not in any lab, not in any AI, not even in the world's most powerful supercomputers. Something is missing, something profound. So, where does the spark of experience come from? Some have looked inward, others have looked deeper, into the foundations of physics itself, where things get weird and nothing makes sense anymore. The quantum realm, a place where particles exist in many places at once, until watched, where reality seems disturbingly entangled with the act of observation. Could consciousness, the very thing that makes you feel alive, be rooted in this strange quantum world? Some scientists think, yes. If consciousness can't be explained by neurons alone, maybe the answer is hidden much deeper. Inside every neuron, microscopic structures work tirelessly. They're called microtubules, little protein scaffolds. They give cells shape. They help things move around. But what if that's not all they do? In the 1990s, a bold theory emerged, proposed by physicist Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff. They called it Orchestrated Objective Reduction, or ORCH-OR. The idea is radical, that quantum superpositions particles being in multiple states at once happen inside microtubules. And when these delicate states collapse, they produce moments of conscious awareness. Collapse, experience, collapse, experience. Billions of times per second, not everyone bought this idea. The brain is warm, it's wet. Quantum states are fragile. They don't like heat and noise. Critics argued microtubules couldn't possibly stay quantum long enough to matter. Case closed, right? Maybe not. In recent years, experiments have quietly chipped away at the skepticism. Researchers have shown that microtubules can maintain quantum coherence for nanoseconds, thousands of times longer than anyone expected, enough time to matter. And then, in 2024, came something even stranger. Neuroscientist Mike Wiest and his team at Wellesley College tested how anesthesia affects microtubules. They found that when microtubules were chemically stabilized, Rats took longer to fall unconscious under anesthesia. Seven out of eight rats resisted the blackout. In other words, mess with microtubules and you mess with consciousness itself. It, it's not proof, not yet, but it's a hint and hints are where revolutions begin. If quantum processes in microtubules can shape consciousness here, what about everywhere else? After all, quantum physics isn't exclusive to brains. It's the foundation of everything in every atom, in every star, in the fabric of space-time itself. 
If our minds arise from quantum dreams, could the universe itself be dreaming too? Some thinkers say yes, and they're not mystics, they're physicists. Okay, let's pause here for just a second, because this is the part where it all gets, well, weird. Quantum collapses, dreaming universes, conscious rats dodging anesthesia like tiny Zen monks. So, what do you think? Is this brilliant science on the verge of rewriting everything, or are we reaching too far into poetic nonsense? Seriously, scroll down, leave a comment, I read them. And trust me, on this question, every perspective matters. After all, if the universe is dreaming us, maybe your comment becomes part of that dream too. By now, one thing should be clear. The quantum world is strange. Particles can be waves, or they can be particles, but they only decide when we look. This is the heart of quantum weirdness. The act of observation appears to shape reality itself. In the 1930s, mathematician John von Neumann formalized the problem. If quantum systems stay fuzzy until measured, where does measurement truly happen? The machine? The detector? The eye? No, he argued. The chain ends at one place only, consciousness. Later, physicist Eugene Wigner pushed the idea even further. He dared to say aloud what many only whispered. It wasn't possible to formulate the laws of quantum mechanics in a fully consistent way without reference to consciousness. In other words, no mind, no collapse, no collapse, no reality. The universe, unsolid, undetermined, until you gaze upon it. Of course, this idea faced fierce resistance. Many physicists rejected the idea that human minds were special cosmic participants. They leaned on alternatives like decoherence, explaining that environmental interactions, not conscious minds, cause collapse. But even today, the debate isn't settled. Some quantum interpretations, like cubism, suggest reality is not objective at all. It's built on observer experience and knowledge. And then came John Archibald Wheeler, with perhaps the most poetic theory of all. He called it the participatory universe. In his view, the universe was not a machine rolling forward on its own. It was unfinished until beings like us came along to look. In Wheeler's words, the universe does not exist out there independent of us. Instead, it is in some strange sense a participatory universe. If Wheeler was right, we do not merely live in the universe, we participate in creating it. And yet, even this idea was not new. 2,000 years earlier, Plato told a similar story. Prisoners in a cave, mistaking shadows for the real world. They never see the outside, the light, the truth. To them, the illusion is reality. What if we are those prisoners? What if the solid world we know is only a projection, a dream in a larger mind? In ancient India, philosophers of Vedanta spoke of Maya, the cosmic illusion, the idea that our perceived world is a dream woven by Brahman, the universal consciousness. In that view, we, the dreamers inside the dream, mistake fleeting appearances for eternal truth. Plato, Vedanta, Wheeler, Wagner, each in their own way, whispering the same idea. Reality might not be entirely real. It might be a dream that only exists because it is dreamed. And if that's true, then only one question remains. Who or what is the dreamer? And so here we are, suspended between possibility and certainty, between particles waiting to be observed and minds wondering why they exist at all. We know consciousness exists, not because science can fully explain it, but because you're here, right now, feeling these words. But where does that awareness come from? Orc OR suggests quantum ripples deep inside microtubules. Physics suggests particles waiting for someone, anyone, to look. And so arises a possibility one that feels both terrifying and beautiful. Perhaps consciousness does not emerge from matter. Perhaps matter emerges from consciousness, not yours, not mine, but from something far beyond. 
Some call it cosmopsychism. The idea that the entire universe is conscious, that galaxies swirl like neurons, that space-time itself hums with awareness. In that view, we are not accidents. We are thoughts, passing moments, like dreams inside the mind of the universe. Of course, maybe we are just that, moments, flickering briefly, then gone. If so, does that make us meaningless, or does it make us precious, tiny fragile flashes in a cosmic sleep? And perhaps this dream is not passive. Perhaps we, as observers, help weave it. Every time we notice, every time we question, every time we wonder. Reality is not something we watch. Reality is something we co-create. So now, the question returns to you, is the universe dreaming us? Or are we dreaming it? Or is there no difference at all? Maybe you'll leave this video and forget. Maybe this idea like a fleeting dream will fade. Or maybe this is the moment where you become aware, aware that in asking this question, you are already part of the answer. Tell us below, what do you believe? Comment your answer and let your thought join the dream.